Third wave feminism is a joke. Yes, third wave feminism is a fucking joke. It's gotten to the point where you can't criticize any woman's choice, no matter how poorly decided it is because all choices are valid. Sex positivity has turned into a prostitution free for all. There are girls on TikTok waiting until the day they turn 18 and can create only fans accounts because it's so glamorized. These girls have no clue how dangerous and volatile the industry is. Teen Vogue is putting out articles stating that rape porn isn't inherently sexist and can be empowering. People are raising their girls gender neutral and then lamenting when the kids gravitate towards pink dolls and princesses. The, the Western woman, the American woman, from a standpoint of marriage and family, this is the worst place in the world to choose a wife. Not only the worst place in the world, it's the worst place in the annals of history to choose a wife. Attention to a woman is like crack cocaine. And so she's seeing these things on the internet, and she's got guys in her DM, and they're giving her a false idea of their value. The male attention is monopoly money. Because when you hit 35, and that attention starts to go away, and you start looking for men, the kind of men you want, now you're competing with the younger, hotter, more fertile girl. There's a reason that God starts, the creator starts, you start to lose your eggs, what, in the mid-30s? I have daughters. Uh, my, my youngest daughter just graduated from college. She's 22. My advice to them, find the best man you can at your youngest age and settle down with him. And if that man is 40 years old, you'd be okay with it? 40? Yeah. As long as he can provide for her and she loves her, he's going to treat her right? Absolutely. As long as they're an adult. It's okay for an 18-year-old or a 19-year-old to have a and have sex and put it all out on the Internet. She's old enough to do that. She's old enough to be in a relationship. It's always from tradition. And you go to other countries, the same thing. You find younger women with older men because the older man is more seasoned. A lot of people got something to say about the fact that I got six kids with six different men. So I'm just going to tell y'all why it is better to do it this way. If I had six kids with all the same dude, I get 34% of his income, which is only six eighty a month. If I got six kids with six different dudes, I get 17% from each one of them, which is $340 a month from each one. $340 a month times six baby daddies is $2,040. So why don't you have six baby daddies? Show, yeah, ma'am. I don't need a man. Okay. Why do you feel you don't need a man? Because I take care of everything myself. Okay. Everything. I'm All a right. single mother. Mm -hmm. I've been a single mother. Let her cook, please. Mm -hmm. ahead, I've ahead. been a single mother since I was 18 years old. There you go. So, you know, I have a great job. I've been in banking since I was 18, so I know how to build myself. Who impregnated you? Just for you to be a single mother. Oh, no, a man. Yeah, that ugly mother. Hold on, see? Hold on. You some beautiful lip gloss no. on your no, face no, right no, now. No, you know no, that? No, you know who no, made that A man. Minutes, queen, it's my turn. So, quite frankly, you can't get pregnant without a man, so you wouldn't be a mother. You don't, you don't own your you don't business, a man. Oh, you don't own your business, so the man owns that, so you wouldn't be employed without the man. Hold on, queen. And the, the fact of the matter is that the car you drive was created by a man. So, don't give me that I don't need a man, because you would be walking without a baby with no job right now without a man. Free man. I didn't say I don't need a man. Yes, you did. <laughs> you did say okay. that, man. How many guys have you slept with? Like 300 guys. What is your biggest kink? I like getting fruit ate out of my ass. What's on your book list for spring break? To suck 10 a night. One time I got a chicken wing stuck up my vagina. What do you bring to the table? I'm hot and white. What's something that you never told your dad? That I'm a fucking slut. Do you think whole phases are necessary? Yes. Yes. I'm in that, so yeah. My dad doesn't know that I'm a giant whore. What is your slut is confession? Okay, What's your so last night I had a guy over and we and then I had another guy over to spend the night like five minutes after. My most viral one was like my no jumper clip where I talked about 50 guys in one night. If a guy licks me out when I'm on my period, <laughs> I'll respect him more. Coochie gon' stink sometimes. It is what it is. I have gotten strapped five times from licking my own poop off of people. I'm positive for type 1 and type 2 herpes. It's not like too big of a deal, I think. A friend of mine was bragging the other day that they're teaching their daughter that women who wear low-cut tops or short skirts look cold. So now when their daughter sees a woman in a bikini on a sunny beach, she says, that lady looks cold. And my friend proudly touts this as raising a feminist daughter. It's gross, 
and plays right into the patriarchal notion that women dressing how the fuck they want to is somehow inherently wrong. It's sexist as fuck. If you're a man in the United States, this is not even a question. Getting married has virtually nothing in it for you and everything in it for her. She can put in a requisite five years, no fault divorce you, take the kids and your assets, then monkey branch to the next sucker, rinse and repeat. She can do this without the slightest of social consequences. The likelihood of this far outweighs the tax write-off, your sole benefit. Better off not even living with a female in many states, or you will fall into the trap of common law marriage, which you never even signed up for. After a couple of generations of watching most of their friends get duped, men have quite naturally woken up. This really isn't the fault of women. They are just the primary beneficiaries, and of course they take advantage of it. The real culprit is our culture of thievery that revolves around the venue of law. Taking shit that isn't yours using the justified force of law, and consequently enriching the attorneys, is a long-standing tradition in the United States. Just ask a Native American, the lawyers just target the bigger fish, which is almost always the man. It's not a good idea for men to get married. And that is why so many men are turning to the MGTOW philosophy. Monogamy has always favored female reproductive strategies and hindered male ones. For men, the primary reproductive strategy is to spread their seed as far and wide as possible. It's quantity over quality. For women, it is the reverse quality over quantity. Women will seek the fittest and most suitable mate to father their progeny and to provide for their family. Social norms of monogamy and the institution of marriage serve to reinforce the female strategy and to demonize and punish the male strategy. This disparity was, once upon a time, offset by marital rights granted to the husband father. But shifts in politics and social attitudes have seen these rights erased until there are none left. Regardless of what you might think of how ethical these rights were, the fact remains that they were what made monogamy or marriage, as you'd like to call it, worthwhile for men, and now they are gone. But it has gone further than simply losing the benefits of marriage. Nowadays, marriage is a punitive institution for men. It affects us negatively. Courts are biased against men, and so a failure of marriage results in a man losing half his assets and having the remainder garnished indefinitely. A father is also likely to lose his children in family court. And all of this alongside the current political climate, where a woman need only point at a man, and the institutions of state and society will endeavor to ruin him, regardless of whether or not he's actually done anything to warrant it. All in all, is it any surprise more and more men are going MGTOW? There are no pros to marriage for men, just a long list of cons. As for whether it's a sign our culture is dying, I'd have to say no. It's a sign that our culture is sick, and that sickness is feminism. It continually pushes men further and further to the fringes, stripping us of our rights, and even our places in society. When society all around you is determined to ostracize and punish you for your very existence, how long would it be before you said, fuck this, I'm going my own way? Please look at the divorce statistics. Look at which gender initiates divorce the most. Look at who ends up being ripped for alimony. Look at the level of false paternity claims. Looked at who gets kicked out of the home and often loses contact with the kids. Once you have done all of this research, then look at the divorce rates. If feminism promotes the idea that a woman doesn't need a man to lead a complete life, then why is it so opposed to MGTOW, which preaches the same thing for men? Well, it's because MGTOW avoiding marriage can hurt feminists' purses. Where will they get alimony and maintenance from? Third wave feminism has never been about equality. It's been about subjugation. Hence, why do you never hear third waivers complain about the treatment of women in the third world? It's only in Western culture. It's pure, unmitigated solipsism. Women want men back onto the vaginal plantation to provide for them while coming into a relationship with nothing more than pets, debt and BPD. Men are waking up and realizing the juice is certainly not worth the squeeze. That's all for today on Manhood. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons and also click on the notification bell to be the first to know when I drop a new video. If you find value in my videos, you can show your support through PayPal or Cash App. The links are in the description. See you next time. Cheers.